I'll speak today uh, about the work done by some of the people listed on this slide, many of whom have contributed, but I'll call attention to the work of some in particular. Uh, so, first I'll speak about uh, some studies concerning the structure of chromatin. I'll do so only very briefly by way of introduction. Uh, this is the work of Henrik Boger of Joachim Griesenbeck and of Yale Lorch especially. Then after that, I'll speak uh, for a part of the time and still by way of introduction uh, about work done especially by Stefan himself, by Klaus Gustafsson, by Craig Kaplan, by Neil Liu, and by Yuro Takagi. And then finally, uh, for the majority of the time, I'll tell you about structural chemistry of the transcription machinery. And this is the work of Francisco Astorius, of David Bushnell, Patrick Cromer, Seth Darst, Al Edwards, Jinwa Fu, Abhiganath, my son Guy Kornberg, most recently, Don Wong, and Ken Westover. Now, my own introduction to work on these lines came from what Stefan has already mentioned, uh, the discovery of the nucleosome, the basic unit of coiling DNA in eukaryotic chromosomes. Um, a combination of X-ray studies and protein chemistry led me years ago to propose the wrapping of DNA around a set of eight histone molecules in what later came to be known as the nucleosome. It was apparent from the outset that coiling DNA in this way would interfere with many DNA transactions. And some years later, uh, Yali Lortz and I showed that the coiling of a promoter DNA molecule in a nucleosome would interfere with transcription in vitro. Soon after, Michael Grinstein showed that packaging DNA in nucleosomes also interferes with transcription in yeast in vivo. The nucleosome then can be regarded as a general gene repressor. It prevents expression of all the many thousands of genes in eukaryotes except those whose transcription is brought about by specific positive regulatory mechanisms. And the question ever after that was to identify those positive regulatory mechanisms. Now, recently, uh, we and others think that those mechanisms have come into view. I won't have time to describe this most recent work in detail. I'll summarize it only in the following way. The, upon gene activation, promoter chromatin is transfor transformed from a static to a dynamic state. Nucleosomes are rapidly removed and reassembled in the activated state. In that way, promoter DNA is made transiently available in a form free of histones and nucleosomes for interaction with the transcription machinery. Now, <coughs> the in consequence of what I have just told you, the, the form of promoter DNA that is transcribed in vivo as a naked molecule, we and others have over the years been successful in identifying components of the transcription machinery based on transcription assays performed with naked DNA in vitro. Uh, our own work is focused on uh, RNA polymerase II for the reasons that are uh, illustrated in this next slide. So as many of you will know, polymerase II is the enzyme responsible for all messenger RNA synthesis in eukaryotes. And as the first step in the pathway of gene expression, polymerase II transcription is a focal point of cellular regulation. It is an endpoint of a great many signal transduction pathways. And it is the intricate regulation of polymerase II transcription that underlies cell development and differentiation. Now, fractionation of the polymerase II transcription machinery and identification of the components involved uh, was begun in the uh, late 1970s, early 80s uh, by Rader and colleagues, starting with an extract from human HeLa cells. That work was extended, it was brought to fruition, and the components of the machinery uh, almost entirely identified by Ronald and Joan Conaway, uh, who took advantage of an extract from rat liver that was a more abundant source of material. Uh, in our own work, we pursued the transcription machinery from the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This was work that was begun by Neil Liu, who solved a long-standing problem of how to make an extract from yeast that would support accurately initiated RNA polymerase II transcription. In retrospect, uh, the pursuit of the problem in yeast was a fortunate choice because, as you'll see, uh, it proved essential for unraveling much of what we've learned about both the 
structure and regulation of the transcription machinery. Now, at the beginning, it was also a doubtful choice. There were many who had good, who questioned, and for good reason, whether our results from studies in yeast would prove relevant to higher systems, including human cells. However, when we and others finally completed fractionation of both yeast and mammalian systems, the results proved to be remarkably the same. So in all cases, the transcription machinery comprises six components, RNA polymerase II, and five so-called general transcription factors that go by the letter names B, D, E, F, and H. Now, the polymerase is by itself able to unwind double helical DNA and make a copy of the DNA sequence in the form of RNA. But the polymerase alone is incapable of locating the start site of the gene, the promoter, incapable of initiating transcription. For these essential functions, it requires the general transcription factors. It was at first believed that this minimal system is complete, that it is capable not only of recognizing the promoter, initiating the transcription, extending the transcript, but also capable of a response to regulatory influences. So it was thought that the – it was thought that regulatory proteins such as a gene activator bound to an enhancer DNA element interacts directly with the components of the minimal transcription machinery. And there was – there were experimental proofs, so substantial evidence to support the idea of direct interaction published in the late 1980s. As a result, when we reported around 1990 evidence for an intermediary factor that we referred to as a mediator of transcriptional regulation, that evidence was largely ignored. Some years later, in 1994, Stefan Bjorklund and Young Jun Kim succeeded in isolating mediator from yeast as a 21 protein, a million molecular weight complex. They showed that fully 13 of the 21 proteins were products of 